Hi everybody! Would you like an inexpensive rain effect to enhance the 2D scenes in your game? We already have the particle rain, which I demonstrated in one of the previous videos. What I'll show today might not be perfect, but the shader itself is very fast, so it can be easily used, for example, to decorate the windows through which you can see a rain-soaked landscape, or even for an entire scene if we manage to set the parameters correctly. Let's do it! I'll be working with a texture that I regularly use for my tutorials, so you might not be seeing it for the first time. First, I'll create the rain effect itself and then I'll demonstrate how it can be combined with this image and further modified. So I'll start with the usual scene into which I'll drag dimensions texture and set up a new shader material with a new shader. Very well, scenes, right click, create new scene, let's call it rain. OK, and the texture is here, I'll drag it to the scene, select the sprite to the uh, node in the node tree and do the usual stuff, transform, position, reset to 0, 0, offset, centered, and disable on. OK, and put it here. Very well, and let's not forget about the material, so it is here, new shader material, click, and new shader which is called rain, gd shader, canvas item, and I'll put it to the shaders folder. Click open and create, and click again to open in the editor. Very well, so as usual, I will delete everything except the fragment function because we won't need anything else. Let's just enhance it a little bit, and here, vertex, and light, delete it. All right, how do we start? The rain effect I demonstrated at the beginning of the video showed some periodic elements, which means we'll need to use a periodic function available in the shading language. This is usually either a trigonometric function like sine or cosine, or a much simpler function called fract, which returns the fractional part of a number, a value between 0 and 1. Let's try writing something like that. So first I will just assign the UV coordinates to a new to a new uh, variable UV in lowercase and now let's define the color of the raindrop. That would be as I said, fract function and as, a, as an argument we can use a simple sum of the components UVX plus UVY, uh, UV, okay, semicolon. And finally, I will assign this to the final color, which means we won't be seeing this <coughs> image for a while, while uh, and we'll be building just this uh, shader effect, vector 4 of the color, that's all. Let's wait for it. Okay, I will, I will just decrease the size a little bit so we can see everything. OK, uh, this doesn't give us any amazing result yet, mainly because we are working with UV coordinates, uh, which are normalized. So the top left corner is 0, 0, and the bottom right is 1, 1. Therefore, the fract function doesn't have <coughs> any significant effect. We'll need to multiply these components in the brackets by some large numbers. Ideally, different ones for each, like this, for example. So I will do this, uh, sorry, multiplied by 20, this is x, and for y, let's multiply it by 10. Okay, it's already a bit better, but the result is still too regular. Let's try to improve it by incorporating another fract function into the argument of the existing fract function. Here I will multiply that by fract. Um, and let's try 50 this time by uvx. That should be enough. <coughs> okay, we are starting to get a pattern. 
that somewhat uh, resembles static rain. However, there are still large continuous areas visible, so we'll multiply the result by another large number. But before I do that, let me just fix one important detail and put this sum to brackets, because the result should be multiplied by the fraction, not just uh, this part. Okay, and now the number to multiply the result with, let's put it for example to 40. Very well. Now we can even see some hints of raindrops somewhere. However, it would be better to display them as white on dark background. So we will subtract our calculation from 1, which will give us an inverse image. 1 minus this. All right, but it's not quite perfect yet. So now we'll enter a phase where we fine-tune these randomly chosen numbers, like 20, 10, and so on. And to make it easier, using sliders, we'll convert them all to uniform parameters. For simplicity, I'll label them as A, B, C, and D, and set all of them to the same initial value. Uniform float A with the int range and initial value would be 50. And I'll put the range to uh, 1 and 100 with the step 0.01. So this is A and now copy and paste three times and create B, C and D. Everything should be right here in the inspector. In the inspector. Yeah, it's there. And I will use them in the code. So instead of 20, let's write A here uh, would be B and C and D. I think we'll probably fine tune this better if we immediately see the rain in motion. So let's add a parameter called speed to control the falling speed of the raindrops. Uniform float speed in range and start at 0.5. Okay, and the range would be from one to let's say four. And I will use it in the code. So this final sum would be increased by time multiplied by speed. Aha, it seems we have an inverted gravity here. So let's fix it by changing the sign of UV coordinates. Now it should be falling down and it does. Very well, let's proceed with adjusting the parameters. I think I achieved the best result like this. So first I decreased the speed to 0.2. Now uh, A would be decreased to about 21 something. B down to 1. Now we are getting something. And C I increased to approximately 70. Okay. I dare say that this is already uh, this already resembles rain much more and it will be even clearer once we integrate this effect into the background of our scene. Notice that we have multiple layers with different falling speeds of the raindrops, which gives the whole effect a sense of depth. Occasionally there is even a very fast vertical line that could with a bit of imagination be called water streaking across the cam camera lens. Now all that's left is to apply our texture. So we will do this and add texture function on the texture and UV plus our effect. Uh, okay, it's not quite there yet. The issue is that uh, simply adding isn't enough to filter out just raindrops while leaving the rest of the image untouched. <coughs> so I'll use a simple condition controlled by the last uniform parameter to help us with that. Uniform float threshold uh, in range and let's start at 0.5. And 
yeah I think we can keep this range and now the condition itself so first we will just use this and if uh, sorry it should be capital UV not UV because we changed the sign of the UV so now it is correct and if uh, color is greater than our threshold then let's add this to the color uh, I mean this and semicolon okay it looks very good don't you think let's see how the effect changes if we adjust the threshold parameter so I'll put it down it seems to be denser and to the one to one it disappears completely we're done we can continue to play with the parameters in the inspector but if we are not too demanding on graphical details this should be fine of course such rain isn't perfect for example it always goes in the vertical direction so if we wanted to tilt it a bit or enhance it to respond to wind direction our code would be significantly more complex the advantage of this solution is its simplicity and performance because all calculations are done in a single line making it efficient even if used multiple times in the same scene or combined with other effects anyway thank you for watching and if you successfully use something like this in your project i'd love to hear about it in the in the comments so have a great time and I'll see you in the next video.